Hi sisters, welcome to our devotional. Today we're going to talk about something that I really love, que lapis. If you can tell, I have some right here. I'm going to take a bite later on. But before we get started with our devotional, I actually have a confession to make. I haven't done the windows yet. You know, everybody said at the beginning of the lockdown, oh, we've got so much time. Now I'm going to do those house chores that I've been putting off because I've been so busy. Well, I got some of those done. I did. I dusted the fan. I cleaned out the storeroom. Well, Tech Ming cleaned out the storeroom. I even managed to pack some of the girls' boxes to put things away for them. But the windows keep being put on the bottom of the list. I even got some really good tips from Sabrina how to do it in stages, and I promised her I would get right on it, but that was last week, and I still haven't done it. Well, you know how it is. We think we have a lot of time, and then we actually get pretty busy. But one thing I did do is I tried some new recipes, and many of you have been sharing with me. I want to show you some pictures of some of the amazing food that's been going around on the line chat. Some of the things that Leo created are amazing. And Yo-Yo, I can't wait till the lockdown is finished and I can have dinner at her house. She's a great cook. I tried a new dish the other night. Eh, not so successful. But I appreciate my husband and my son. Tech Ming is so sweet. He just kept eating it. <laughs> And my son said, Mom, I think Dad really likes it. I tried coconut chicken. And, you know, you make do with what you have at home. I didn't have exactly the right ingredients. It wasn't awesome, but it passed. But one of my girlfriends sent me a photo. She made a cake in the rice cooker. I've heard about doing it. I've actually never tried, but her cake looked really good. But the one I would really like to know how to make is this one. Ooh, it's good. Mm, sorry for chewing. That's actually really moist and really good, even though it's store-bought. But you know, quay lapis, layer cake. Layer upon layer. This one, I can't even count how many layers it is. This takes so much work. I would love to have time to put in that effort. It's very tedious. You have to bake one layer, then put the next, then put the next and the next until you've got this beautiful layered cake. And it is so yummy and it's so rich. You really just need one bite or two bites or maybe three bites and then that's about all for the next time you have to save it. But Quay Lapis is such a special cake because it's made with so much effort. You can, of course, buy the store-bought kind, and I know we've all tried it, and it's eh, It doesn't really cut it. The one that you really need is traditional homemade. The effort that they put in to make every layer match the next layer is just wonderful. And it makes this complete cake that is so special. Well, it kind of reminded me in the same way of our spiritual life. Now, I know you're thinking, how do we do cake and spiritual life? How does that go together? Well, our spiritual life is made up of layers and layers and layers of faith, isn't it? Our faith experiences that we pile on to one another until we have a beautiful, mature faith, just like a beautiful quay lapis. I want to talk a little bit about how we can grow in layering our faith, in growing our faith. One of the characters in the Bible that comes to mind is Peter. We can see Peter go through the process, the spiritual process, from just getting to see Christ and who is he, all the way until Peter becomes the pillar of the church after the resurrection. What an amazing faith journey 
Peter has. So today I want to take just a few minutes to go and look at the different layers of faith that Peter had. And as we're going through this, I want you to ask yourself, how are my spiritual layers? Have I just stopped at the first layer or have I added or what can I add next to my faith so that I can be spiritually complete and mature? So let's begin looking at Peter, the first layer of faith. So for the first layer of faith that we're going to look at in Peter, this layer is belief. When Peter first got to know who Christ is. In John chapter 1, we'll just turn over there. I'll put the verses at the end of the video. You can look at those later. But John chapter 1, verse 41. Andrew calls Simon Peter his brother. And he says, we have found the Messiah. Come, come and see. And this is the first time when Peter, he'd heard about Jesus from John the Baptist, but he wasn't sure who Jesus was. But that first layer of faith is his belief. And he went and he said, oh, this is the one. That's the starting point. Later you see in Mark chapter 1, verse 16, very familiar passage where Jesus says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And again in Matthew 4, where he calls them to be fishers of men. You see how Peter starts with that first layer of faith and he adds following Jesus, becoming a fisher of men. That's building his faith step by step. The next one we see, the next layer is faith to obey. In Luke chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 3 through 5, He got into one of the boats, this is Jesus, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked them to put out a little farther from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. I love that passage. I love that expression. You see here, Peter's faith has another layer to it. Not only is he believing in Christ, following him, but now he has decided to add that layer of obedience. Because you say so, I will let down the nets. That's adding to his spiritual maturity. Another example, in Matthew 14, we see that miraculous experience that Peter had. Remember? When he stepped out of the boat, when he got into the water, and he actually walked on water. Maybe just a few steps, but something that certainly none of us have ever experienced. He added that layer of obedience to his faith and he did something that was miraculous experiencing walking towards Jesus in faith even though Jesus says he has little faith but still he had a great faith the next layer we're talking about is he had faith to proclaim Christ look in Matthew 16 and we're going to look in verses 15 through 16. He's got the layer of obedience, and now he's adding the layer of proclaiming Christ to his faith. In Matthew 16, in verses 15, 13 through 16. Okay, Peter's confession of Christ. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, 
Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amazing. Amazing. Look at how Peter has grown from just being Andrew's brother who came curiously to see who is this Jesus? Is he really the one John the Baptist was talking about? That first layer of belief. Then adding the next layer of obedience, believing in Jesus and obeying what he said, let down your nets, come walk to me. Till finally he is matured to a point where he can proclaim, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. That's amazing, sisters. What a wonderful development in his faith. Another layer of faith is the faith to get back up again when we failed. John 21. I won't read the whole passage, but you know the situation after the resurrection. Jesus revealed himself to the disciples and he asked Peter, do you love me? What a, what a tough question. And Peter said, you know that I love you. And how many times did Jesus ask? Do you remember? Three times. And some say that is kind of to make up for the three times that Peter denied Jesus. Kind of to balance things out a little bit. But after that, Peter went on to be the pillar of the church in the first century. Isn't that amazing? After denying Christ at the cross, even saying, I don't know the man, even denying that he knew who Jesus was, and yet after the resurrection, Jesus lifting him up and saying, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Go on, Peter. Go and lead my people. And Peter had the faith and courage to go and lead God's people. So layer by layer by layer by layer, he's adding to his faith until it's producing a spiritual maturity that is very beautiful and very powerful. And the last layer of faith that we'll look at is the faith to make a difference. In Acts chapter 2, the whole passage, Peter shines through in his leadership teaching from Old Testament all the way to the time of the resurrection, who is the Christ, how Jesus fulfilled the scriptures, how he truly is the Savior, and leading people into the New Testament, that Jesus is the Christ and salvation is in Christ alone. The first sermon, the first church service sometimes we call it, the beginning of the future of the Christian world. Peter made a difference. Of course, if you read through the book of Acts, you read through the rest of the New Testament, you'll see the impact that Peter had. Because he had the courage and the perseverance to add to his faith layer by layer by layer. So that just like this quay lapis cake, he could be something so amazing and God could use him so powerfully. Sisters, today we want to ask ourselves, how can we follow Peter's example? What are some of the steps that we can take? We need to decide to wholeheartedly follow Jesus. We need to be willing to be challenged and called higher by Jesus. Even though it was difficult, Peter didn't shrink back when Jesus asked him, to give his whole heart. Peter was vulnerable about his struggles and he wasn't afraid to look bad in front of others. Often we want to hide when we've made mistakes, but Peter was right out there so that he could learn and grow. And very specially, he had a band of brothers, which we have a band of sisters. Women who will help us and keep us accountable to adding to our faith. When he was knocked down, 
he kept getting back up. And of course, he had help to do that along the way. And finally, most importantly, he never let go the hand of Jesus. That is so crucial to our spiritual growth, sisters, that we don't let go even when we struggle, but we hold on in faith to the hand of Jesus as he leads us on our way to spiritual maturity. Where is your faith development now? Are you still at the first layer, just believing? Have you, have you thought about how you can add obedience to your belief and how you can add proclaiming Christ onto your obedience? And after that, getting back up again when you've fallen because we will all fall definitely more than one time and how you can make a difference with your faith in the world around you. Just as we have this wonderful layer by layer cake that is so enjoyable, we need to have layer upon layer upon layer of our faith development, our faith growth, so that we can have spiritual maturity. I want you to be able to look at the reflection questions, discuss with your sisters, be open about where you see your faith is at and go through the reflection questions and help one another to know how to add the next layer. It's okay if you're still at the first layer, but don't stop there. Persevere. Learn how to be more obedient to Christ. And if you already feel, I have that faith, I'm obedient to Christ, then challenge yourself. Get out of the boat. Walk on water. Do something that's scary to you so that you can continue to add and mature your faith. And if by chance you fall, which you will, have the faith to know God loves you, God is gracious and merciful, and God will help you to continue to grow. You've got to get back up. And as you go in your faith journey, make sure you are putting your heart out there into the community, into the brothers and sisters around you so that you can make a difference as you stand up for God. I hope you'll take the time to read the verses that I'll put at the end of the Devo. Go back, go through them. Look at Peter's journey of faith and see how you can imitate his life. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a great discussion afterwards.